All right, we're getting to our first RV park. River Edge RV Park and Cabin Rentals in Tennessee. First site, first RV site. Let's walk this site. All righty. <laughs> you look puzzled. Pretty much need to get right next to this. Yeah, yeah. With wheels. But otherwise, our sewer is going to be right on top of that. All right, before we back in, what are we doing? So our sway control needs to be removed. So we can steer a little bit easier. Loosen it up. Safety pin back in place. And store it away. And now we go. A little nervous. All right, here we go. Stop. No, it's right in the center. It's perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Good job. All right. What's next? <laughs> What's next? Another break. What's next is to disconnect the truck. Okay. The trailer should be leveled side to side. Once we disconnect the truck, we'll level it front to back. Fantastic. And as you place them, what they do is they spread and they lock both tires against each other. It's locked. Not running. We come back down until we can disconnect the hitch. There we go. And then we can do the escape. Hit the button again. Keep going up. First detachment. <laughs> And you want to raise just enough for the ball to clear out. Mm -hmm. The next thing you do is you turn these, the weight distribution bars sideways, and they just come out like that. The next thing you do is park it up. Our handy level, and the hand again. So you're kind of eyeballing this level situation right now first? For the initial part, you do the eyeball. <laughs> kind of look on the side, it looks a little bit high. I'm say roughly about there. Okay. What I like to use is one of these ridges on the panels. There's one right there, there's another one right there. They're a straight line across. And what I do is I just 
and either I'm lucky or I'm good at eyeballing stuff. If I hadn't recorded that, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> That's uh, pretty much All right, look 98 at that. percent level. Beautiful. It needs to go about a quarter of an inch higher in the front. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit that button. That much. One more test. And now we're 100% level. Alrighty. Now, the next step grab our little power drill. What if you don't have a power drill? If you don't have a power drill, most of these three and the rest come with a little handy and crank. So, so starter. Hand crank. What you do is you put the crank here and you do manual lowering. In our case, we have a little drill with a 19 milliliter or three quarter extension, which are what you guys have. And left you see righty tighty. Righty right side rotation brings them down a lot quicker. So before we go all the way down. Of these, just put these down out there. What you want to do is essentially make a make a leveler touch the block and kind of eyeball one more rotation of the drill. It's about there, and that's it. Okay. You repeat the same step in all four corners. All right. Perfect. I'm gonna go to the bathroom while well, you do that. <laughs> In the future, I am gonna help you, but since it's the first time, we're just gonna record it. I get to record, and he gets to do it. <laughs> I get to do all the work. Just for this time. <laughs> One little gadget that we didn't mention earlier when disconnecting is this whole safety lock. It's pretty much all that it does is once you connect the trailer to the truck, this little pin goes through, and you tighten this little lock. Up. And you remove the key that secures this from detaching off the trunk. Next step, the fun stuff sewer and water. What we have is water hose that somehow got pink. Should be long enough. We also have a filter, a little Savior Hose 90 degree elbow, and the most important thing is water pressure regulator. The reason you need this is because a lot of campgrounds have a high water pressure and your rig is most likely equipped with a PVC pipe. And if too high pressure goes in, they can blow and your rig gets flooded. So, everything is connected. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the water on. No leaks there, no leaks there. Next thing we do, all you I'm trying. <laughs> you better get out here in daylight. So, since we have outside kitchen, the easiest way to check if everything water-wise is connected and working after you remove the Okay, plug. The one thing that you might want to check is if your water pump is turned off. <laughs> Since we used it. Oh, it was on. Okay. There you go. So now you go back here. You can skip that step if you didn't use. <laughs> and then you turn the water on again. Most of the time because that little water hose was empty, you'll have some air trapped in the system, 
So what you should do is open all your faucets through the pole rig and let them go for a minute or so, if you have a full hookup, and make sure that all the air is out of the system. We finish our water connection, make sure that all the air is out of the system. The next thing to do is sewer hose. Now, our rig needs dual sewer hose, that's why we have two sewer hose carriers, hold it. Inside of that, we have multiple sewer hoses. Now, to make it easier, I'm going to grab a pair of gloves. That's what you should do when doing the sewer hose. Even if though they're brand new. And I'm going to take a whole box with us. your sewer connectors location. Most of the RV sites have these that are threaded. In this case, this one is not, but we have a little rubber donut looking thing. Those like that. And it makes a snap connection. Thing. And that's our main connector. Now from there, put a little light connector and a angle it. You have two points. Grab one of our super hoses. That was closed as it should for transportation. Sometimes these things are hard to open. A little bit of water in there. You do that. Make sure that's a good connection. So, the thing to do is open it also because air vacuum doesn't work. Send your hose and you click it there. On one connection. We have our main gray tank and the black tank. And on the back one, that's just for our outside kitchen gray tank connection. So, open the second one. Some water is normal to be there. Connect your second hose. Kind of try to organize it the best way you can. Let me go this way. Make sure all these connections are nice and tight. So this stuff essentially helps you make a little downhill path for all the water and everything. So what you do is kind of raise the clothes off the ground the best way you can to make a slope and slope hopefully for everything and one thing I made a mistake that I'm gonna fix right now is I'll pull this up and put our water hose on the other side and then water hose can be a little bit out of the way because for some reason this thing is really high up off the ground most of the time they're down level and they make this stuff work easier. So we open this part. Water? How do you run water? Well what we do is we have one valve here. This valve releases our main brake. Is there everything connected? And if Dear I God. This, Is everything really connected? And there is no wet. leaks. No leaks, great. Water is flowing. Is that emptying out the last two days of stuff? In theory? In theory, yes. Or last four days, because we ran the system at the house parking. Okay. So we initially brought the trailer. Do we need to do that with the other side as well? 
Well, what we're gonna do is we'll open that side too. This side too. And as far as I can see, some water is flowing. <laughs> things away in here. And there's your hookup. So if we finished our connection of water and sewer, the last thing and the important thing is power. This time we get a 50 amp connection, even though our trailer requires 30. So 50 amp, 30 amp converter. Another really important thing is the surge protector. Now these things are a little bit pricey, but in the long run, they save worry of electricity and electrical stuff and important things inside of your rig. So, thank you for our RV, killer, rig, or what you guys like to call it. Make sure you have enough pull out. I like to put a little cover back on. First thing first, 50 to 30. Make sure that's a good snug fit. Open your Box. Now these are off. I'm gonna make sure these are off too. 50 amp connection. Make sure that's tight. Next thing you do is you turn this on. Now this little box should give you green and blue light. Green third protection on. Blue on means correct wiring. Now I managed to pull the little cover off, so I'm gonna put that back on. Next thing you do is you make sure everything else is turned off in the trailer. You connect your plug, you close the little lid, and you leave all this thing in here. Now, that's all plugged in. You're going to leave that, and you're going to go around. So, a little mess around, sorry for that. We picked up some stuff on the way here. You put the power on. Once the slide is out, I like to check power by turning the AC on. So you go to your AC panel, or if you have your microwave plugged in, or your TV, in this case, you can just turn one of those devices on. And there you go. Power is on. Power is on. All right, can you, can you do the awning? Oh. Test it. Oh, and the light for the awning. Aha. Look at that. So now that the power is on, awning is out, lights are on, mm. it's time to have some fun. Yay! First time. <laughs> First time. <laughs> Alright, we're set up. First meal yeah. cooked. And I think we're good to go. Cheers. Cheers. All right.